So we are in session 23. Uh, uh, in this session, we will cover system.io namespace and we'll start with introducing to the Windows applications uh, to cover the system.io namespace. So we will deep dive into the Windows applications uh, creation um, and also we'll walk through the uh, ID templates for uh, creating the especially the Windows uh, projects and creating the project templates with the source control, some of the overview with the Visual Studio IDE and also we'll uh, create a program to demonstrate uh, system.io.file and file info classes as well as the directory info, we'll see file stream how to use it, we'll see stream reader and stream writer, we'll see file system watcher and also we'll see uh, an algorithm to do a recursively iterate through a nth root of a directory uh, with this example. But that's a very interesting uh, program uh, which I like by myself and you will definitely like it. Okay, so today we're going to look at the system.io namespace. Um, so today onwards we'll be actually jumping into the other type of applications which are uh, Windows based applications. Probably this is going to be more interesting going forward. So the console applications are, uh, will be for an end with the last session. Today we will uh, uh, see the intro to the Windows based applications um, and uh, to keep it simple because uh, our major motive is to cover the language and we did cover the language in detail so for going forward we'll be in little bit fast mode uh, uh, so I, I may not cover you uh, cover each and every detail uh, uh, what we have so I, I will show you the, uh, the of course the main important things that you need to be aware of uh, before uh, writing any Windows based applications and other things so language wise uh, you will see everywhere uh, with uh, any type of applications. Okay, so we'll start today um, with uh, the system uh, system.io as IO stands for input and output. Uh, this is again a very very important namespace uh, uh, in the base class library that's BCL comes with the .NET framework and uh, this contains some of the uh, very very important uh, classes that I have listed in this slide. Uh, and uh, it does have a couple of more um, uh, again to a specific need so if you want to explore all of them you can actually always uh, welcome to go to the MSDN and uh, check for system.io namespace and you'll, you'll see the all the list of um, uh, classes available uh, within the namespace and as the name suggests IO stands for input output that means it's pretty much uh, dealing with the um, uh, file operation so that you can uh, write and read uh, and also transmit um, in a stream of uh, by streams and other things so just give you a quick uh, glance at uh, some of the important uh, class names here uh, number one is the file uh, it's a static uh, it, it provides a couple of static methods to create a copying deleting moving and opening of files and aids in the creation of file stream objects in other words if you look at any file uh, in general on a file system file is the top one so the file you can actually create any type of uh, file using the file IO operations and uh, uh, this represents a file on the file system and also the file stream objects which we'll see down the line again so the file represents a file in a system it could be any type of file it doesn't matter it, okay and file info file info object provides the information about the file and also a couple of uh, additional properties uh, which will aid you to create the file stream again so the the difference between a file and file i uh, file info is that uh, file info has methods to create a file whereas uh, uh, and also the file attributes in general if you take a look at the file in a file system and right click and say go to properties you have some of the attributes here right these are the attributes here hidden read only created modified all these are uh, some of the metadata associated to that given file so if you want to tell, read the uh, meta, meta information of this file so a file info is going to be very helpful including that uh, it has the type of the file uh, what is the content in other words is extension based on the extension and also its size 
where's the created date and uh, where it's located and so on. So that's all the metadata information of the given file can be available as part of the file info object. Um, okay, so that's uh, those, those are the predefined classes uh, in I.O. And directory, similarly, it gives you the information about the directory uh, and using that you can actually load the content of a directory, which means another collection of files or collection of directories. And which you know directory is another way, uh, the other word for that is the folder, which we normally see. And similarly, directory info will give you the information of the directory uh, with respect to the location and the contents of the summarized information like how many files it has and all that kind of information you can provide. And also it provides uh, provides some of the instance methods and if you take a, take a careful look at uh, the uh, the static methods versus the non-static. So again, so those are the language specific keywords that we already know what the static method means and what is an instance method. So file uh, as a class has some of the static methods which aid in creating a files uh, or deleting files or manipulating files in other words whereas the file info uh, is uh, having an instance methods why because before you access the file information you actually need to uh, create an instance of it and map the given file so that the uh, the instance of the file info class will have the information loaded into this uh, into its variable so that's why file info doesn't have any static methods and the file info has all concrete methods, which means instance methods in other words. So that's a key distinction between a file and file info. Again, so you need to make, uh, if, if for example, if you want to create a file, you just have to go and say file uh, dot the respective create uh, static method. You don't have to create instance of the file um, file class to create, an, to create a file. So that's the difference between a static and, a static and instance methods. So always again a recap on static methods. The static methods can be associated to the class directly, not to the instance. Whereas the um, instance methods are associated to the instance, not to the class. So that's the key difference there. Similarly with the directory and directory info, and comes the, then comes the file stream. So file stream is again um, it exposes a, a stream around a file. So the content of the file is uh, transformed into a file stream. So it could be uh, completely into a uh, binary format. Uh, and it aids in synchronize, uh, uh, supporting in both the uh, synchronous and asynchronous read and write operations. So I uh, hope you are aware of these two keywords, asynchronous and asynchronous. Uh, uh, to keep it simple, uh, synchronous means when a call is made to a given uh, method um, uh, the caller need to wait till the method returns something so the the request and response operation uh, the latency period do, during the latency period is applied completely to the caller so the caller cannot do anything else till the response is received uh, whereas in the asynchronous uh, mechanism the asynchronous uh, uh, once you invoke the respective uh, method the caller need not wait for the method to complete its operation so it can actually go ahead and uh, continue other jobs and once the the called operation is successful or failure whatever the end result is the the called method uh, will call back another um, another method from the caller side to inform the result of the operation. So that's an asynchronous process. So you can, the file system, a file stream uh, has that capability of doing both the synchronous and asynchronous um, read and write operations. And uh, next to the stream, which is again a generic view of the sequence of bytes, which is a part of this file stream itself. It, uh, it's a class itself. It uh, holds the entire byte stream of the content of the file. And the stream reader, stream writer, they are self-explanatory. They implement the uh, text reader, text writer to provide you the read and write capabilities of the content of the file. So as the name implies, if you want to create a file, uh, you can actually use the stream reader or stream writer directly uh, and create files. So we'll see some of these uh, cl important classes. We're going to see a demonstration today along with the Windows-based application. And the 
uh, again the last two uh, one is a binary reader and binary writer so in this case you can actually uh, use any kind of uh, file types in this case uh, you, uh, the content of the file uh, you're completely not aware of and you don't really care about uh, so if you want to handle uh, a stream uh, completely in the binary format so that you can um, use it for any purpose you get the binary format and then convert into the respective format and then it's pretty much you can use the read write capabilities uh, on any type of file using the binary reader and binary writer and uh, file system watcher this is again a very interesting one file system watcher the name implies it's going to be a listener uh, that can listen uh, to a given folder including all its uh, subdirectories what does it do by listening to a given folder? Um, if you have uh, any activity going on in a given folder uh, and this file uh, file system washer, can I, if you associate that given path to it, so it's going to keep on listening to it. It doesn't mean that it's, it's a, uh, there's something, uh, a timer is going to be turned on and things like that. It's going to be a, a a thread that will be running behind the scene that will be watching to the folder. So if you someone is creating files to it or modifying any files on that given folder, uh, the file system watch is going to notify you that some some of the content of the folder has changed. Uh, so this is a very very useful one. Uh, and uh, even in .NET, uh, .NET this mechanism uh, is is used in especially in um, in uh, file based caching. Uh, for example, uh, if you have any flat file on a system uh, that you uh, rely on, for example, some information is loaded into the cache when the application is uh, started and uh, someone want to, for example, a good example would be the configuration files. For example, if you have any uh, configuration file which has some configuration information and uh, of course the config file uh, will be loaded when the application starts. Uh, into the memory. Um, so once it is loaded into the memory, thereafter the application is going to read through the memory so that the file I.O. operation is completely gone um, and the uh, read and write from the memory is going to be much faster than the file. So to get that, uh, gain that advantage, it's going to be cached. So uh, if someone changes the file content, then what will happen? So if the runtime uh, the application is running and someone wants to change something to, uh, to reflect the changes into the application, so uh, you what ideally you need to do is you have to close the application and then restart the application so that it loads the latest file. So in this case if you have a file system washer on that particular folder or file then uh, what happens is if soon after someone modifies any content uh, the application can get notified that the file this particular file has modified so that you can refresh the cache with the content of the new file so how uh, that's going to be very very useful. Uh, so that you don't have to uh, kill the application and uh, reload the file uh, at runtime. So you, you can continue using the application just changing the value. So we'll see a demo of that and uh, also some of the very important uh, things here uh, along with the. So I'm going to reduce the uh, amount of slides. So that's the only slide I have for today, so nothing else. So although I have this uh, project created uh, and of course uh, going to run, um, but I want to to take you to the route of creating a brand new solution and uh, walk you through that so, the, so that uh, it helps you to follow step by step process. So right now I'm going to close the solution. What I'm going to do is um, I'm going to create a new project. Okay, we'll start from the new project. In this exercise, we're going to pretty much create a, a, a very good rich application and uh, notice how much time it's going to take to create a, a rich application. Uh, for example, if you see a notepad, this is a Windows based application, right? Uh, if you take a careful, careful look at this Windows based application, it's pretty simple lightweight tool. It has a menu bar, of course we everyone knows it has a title bar and it has a control uh, items here which can one can be closed uh, uh, resize and minimize buttons and it has a scroll bars and the place to handle your file right so it's a pretty lightweight a simple control which has some of the menu items and so on so each one of each one of menu items has some operation attached to it and all of this we're going to do 
uh, in fact as a matter of fact it's going to be list little li richer than the notepad and we will try to do something like a notepad okay and uh, carefully note see how much time uh, will it take to create a notepad kind of application okay so I'm going to create a new project and the I will say my notepad okay so I'll say a system I dot my notepad okay so I'm just trying to trying to create a new project so create uh, we're going to check the create directory for solution so that it's going to create another directory within this root path so hope you're familiar with this uh, uh, dialog for new project and uh, if it, if not, uh, then I'll try to give you a, a fairly good look at this uh, um, this new project window. So if you see on the left hand side, uh, we have the Visual Studio uh, Visual C Sharp as the primary language it targeted to because uh, once you first install the Visual Studio 2010 and start for the first time, it's going to prompt you to pick the respective language. Uh, uh, which you want to set as a default language. So the language, whatever you pick at that stage, will become your default language. And it uh, and Visual Studio, whenever you say new la new project, it's going to go back directly to the respective um, the templates. So these are again, uh, make no mistake, these are just templates. And uh, uh, without these templates, you can still create the projects. But only thing is, it, it will take a little more pain. So the advantage of a template, we'll see clearly here. And since our language preference is C-sharp, and if you want to pick other languages, you can actually go with other languages and pick the Visual Basic or C++ or F-sharp. I have the function-based programming language here, F-sharp and Visual C++ you can do here, and also Visual Basic. And there are so many other languages which you can actually download and add to the Visual Studio. So, so right now I have only these four. And don't worry if you don't have any of these again. And other project types here, the it's empty and, and again database. I can have even SQL Server uh, database uh, projects here. And uh, yeah, another interesting thing if you see the um, Visual Basic SQL CLR database project, if you'd be uh, interested to know. You know the stored products that you can create in the store uh, in the SQL side, right? So in .NET, uh, you can actually write a CLR stored products, which means um, the stored products that can run on the C# um, runtime or the .NET runtime. What that means is uh, uh, the SQL Server database side. Uh, the if, if you have you have the uh, .NET framework runtime. You can pretty much write a stored proc so using your C sharp .NET code. That means all the rich feature language features you can have, uh, have, and then uh, write a stored proc that can uh, run on the database engine, so which is going to be very very interesting. You can actually there is no limit that uh, you can't do anything with that CLR stored procs. Uh, probably again this is uh, unfortunately that's going to be out of topic uh, for our training. Um, probably in advanced training I can pick it up. Okay, yes, um, Visual C Sharp. So in this case, uh, we are back to Visual C Sharp. And in this case, on the right hand side, if you see all these templates, uh, whatever uh, were installed in my machine are available. So if you take a close look at all uh, to these templates, uh, you can actually pretty much visualize what all different types of applications I can uh, create. Um, and if you see the Crystal Reports application, you have a WCF workflow service application. Uh, it's not a service, it's a workflow service, which is again, again, a, a brand new things which we don't want to get in. And uh, and also, don't get lost by looking at so many things. Usually, it happens um, that okay, what is this? And uh, I'll try to create a project like this, and then uh, try to deviate. So each one of these applications are a topic of a big. Uh, of its own. So uh, WPF itself is a completely a different um, methodology or it's a different kind of application and uh, the way you write or the code you write is again uh, completely different but still of course language wise uh, they are similar but um, uh, the simple example is if you take a, a web based application it's going to be completely ASPX uh, uh, pages that you're going to create on that and the ASPX uh, 
designer um, uh, syntax or tags that you're going to use are completely different versus the WPF based applications. Uh, with WPF again they use XAML. We don't want to go into those uh, uh, details. So for the topic of your interest for the current session is Windows Forms. <clears throat> okay, so we'll jump into Windows Forms. And I gave a name for my application which is system.io.my.notepad and then hit Again, if you take a look at this, uh, another small icon here, or another checkbox, sorry, add to source control. So this is again a very important thing when you really go ahead with the real-time uh, uh, work, work environment. This checkbox, uh, checkbox is really going to be very, very useful. And to know what is a source control, uh, probably most of you might also uh, uh, working professionals so you know what is a source control uh, for those who don't know so source control in usually when you really go for a live application then you will have to work with the source control what it means is the uh, the solution that you're going to write or the code files that you're going to work on uh, usually in in this practice so all of those files are in my local machine right so everything sits in my local machine so they are not available anywhere else so in a real-time development scenario, it's not going to be that way because uh, you'll have a team members uh, working with the same project and uh, if you say if you have uh, five different team developers working on the same project, then they all will be uh, accessing the same project at the same time. So to do that, uh, there's a central repository for <coughs> all this, <coughs> excuse me, uh, all these uh, source code uh, so that the respective developers will need to access the source control uh, database and then get the project from there and then work with them. So again to show you that uh, kind of uh, in um, uh, visual uh, source safe um, source control mechanism I don't have the source control here set up uh, although I can uh, do it but it's going to take time but so uh, so I can't show you how it's going to look like. It's going to look like pretty same. It's going to be everything pretty same. Uh, let's go ahead and create it and let's uh, give you a little bit uh, background of the source control also. Uh, what happens in ideally is uh, you need to in Visual Studio uh, IDE it can directly integrate to your uh, respective source control uh, applications um, that you can do from tools options and again uh, take a look at all uh, to all these options these are uh, completely Visual Studio ID uh, settings uh, the best thing the best way to learn uh, is you know uh, looking at each one every options available in the Visual Studio most of the time uh, whatever you see in the ID you can actually change it from here and including the fonts or the background settings and everything and find and replace menu you have a lot of fonts and colors this is going to be interesting you people normally you know if you if you have some vision problem uh, that you can't see a bright light like this you can actually change the background to a you know you can item background so on so you can change the background to some any, any color that you like you can change the id appearance completely from the environment and similarly now the point of interest here is the source control so in the source control, this is the plugin that you need to be using. So by default, here I have the Team Foundation Server. So TFS, in other words, in, in other words, uh, the acronym uh, stands for. And TFS is again a very very uh, popular um, uh, server, which is uh, going to be used for the ver uh, version control as well. Again, uh, version control or source control uh, or source safe all stand same. So Visual Source Safe is one of the uh, uh, legacy source control uh, tool available by Microsoft. So um, you can also use that. If you have any third party source control, so then you need to just install the respective plugins and once you install the plugin, uh, it's going to be available in the options uh, in this list. So the plugin can be added and that will be available in this list soon after you install it. And once you're done, and uh, you should be uh, good to go. So all the respective things will be same with any plugin that you're going to use. Okay, and another important thing: if you say check-in items, check-in and check-out is a process wherein 
wherein you um, get the file for edit and uh, uh, and update your changes to the server again. So it's pretty much like you retrieve the item from the server for changing and once you change the file, you save the file back to the server. So that's a, a check-in process is the uh, one-way route wherein you save your uh, changes to the file to the server. That means your source of server. And uh, the other way out, check out is a process where you uh, get the file to for editing. Okay, so this is where the by default it's checked out automatically. What it means is once you get the file out and you try to change something like this, it's going to check out automatically. That means that by default all of these files will be locked for edit. So if you change that option there, then uh, you will have a additional menu items here like check out and then check in. So I'm fortunate I couldn't show you that. Um, but you go, once you right click and see, there you will have a checkout option, uh, one of the menu option, the context menu option, which you can pick and do it. Okay. And if you're adding the solution to a source control, then you can actually um, um, make use of the file source control option and say add solution to source control or once you, once the plugin is attached to it then uh, all these should work okay and the change source control again uh, here it is showing this uh, source control since I don't have the uh, source of uh, server so it's not actually showing up here otherwise uh, it will show up the respective server where your uh, each and every files are saved Okay, so that's the little bit overview of the source control and that's very important. That's the reason I just covered that. Uh, okay, now we'll jump in. Okay, so soon after I created the Windows based application, I have, as usual, a form. A form is a base element uh, wherein your, that's the GUI, in other words, uh, which uses C. So if, by default, if uh, we have a uh, form 1, so straight away without adding any piece of code, if I say run, then I have the basic form that's available, which has the basic form elements like, you know, it has the, uh, again, a context menu on the on the, uh, uh, the tool. Um, and also you have these menu items uh, um, on the uh, title bar and which can have its own, all its base in, uh, behavior is implemented. So you don't have to write any additional code for that. So all these minimize, maximize, close code is available. It is available because it's part of the form class. And if you take go to definition of that, the form is a, a class in system dot windows dot forms namespace. Okay, so that's a key thing too. Uh, remember that um, f uh, Windows Forms application inherit from system.windows.forms class uh, or in the namespace and the, in the forms namespace has a form class and as, as a rec if you recollect everything in .NET is classes right so whatever you see uh, look and feel everything is defined in some class in this case uh, this is also a class right and someone need to create instance of this form and may uh, available at runtime, right? So someone have to do this uh, initialization process. And who is doing that in this case? If you take a look at the program.cs, here you go. If you take a look at this code, what is doing is it's the application is the high level, uh, high level class again. And uh, that's uh, easy to hold dot and application itself uh, uh, when you once compile the exe is your application and it ha again runs within an uh, application domain which we did talk about uh, the app domain and within that we are passing the instance of the form one here so, so here the piece of code says that it's going to create instance of that form which is form one and then you're going to run that okay so that's a part of it so what uh, so we have we, we are not getting into too much of details of what the base class really have from the metadata. You can actually take a look at each and every method. There's a ton of methods. Probably you don't want to actually uh, study them uh, all at overnight and prepare for some exam, but that's not the case. You don't. You will never do that. So only thing uh, you might be looking at at the high level. Uh, okay, what is this form inherits to? It inherits to container control. So again, so that means form itself is a container, 
what is a container again? The container can hold other controls within it. So the name, self, the name is self-explanatory. In other words, the container control. So con there are some controls which uh, are going to be standalone, and they can sit only on other containers, um, like a label. We'll see some of those actually. Uh, I might, I might not cover all the tools available. Uh, it's uh, up to your best interest. There are a ton of uh, tools available actually uh, on the left hand side in the toolbox and again this toolbox will be visible only when you uh, when the designer mode is open. That means when you see this form as a designer mode. If you go to the source mode the toolbox will be gone. Okay. Uh, and, uh, you will have seen people are struggling to find the toolbox uh, in the code window. So this is the code window. This is completely different. So the, at the code window, you won't see any controls available on the left hand side. Okay, so you will see the controls available only in the form view, the designer mode. Okay, so that's, uh, uh, don't get confused if you don't see the toolbox. Okay, they will be available only with the designer. If you see it uh, within the, uh, the tab here, it says that design right it's in the design mode cool so what are the different types of controls available here um, it says the all so everything is um, available in this all windows forms okay so, and the, these are the other groups uh, uh, wherein uh, all these elements that you see in all windows forms to a tab are, are grouped into other respective uh, categories so the most common controls here, the common controls are available. You have a button control, checkbox, a checklist, combo box, a date time picker, so many things. And hope you already, uh, if you're already a uh, programmer, then you will know what each one of them means. Uh, I don't have to explicitly uh, cover each and every of those controls. If it is uh, uh, the Windows um, um, programming uh, sessions uh, that means if it is completely a Windows programming then I, I would have definitely gone through each and every control that's available on the left hand side so uh, I will be continuing using some of those uh, tools to cover some of our namespace topics okay so I will not be uh, showing each and every one of them and uh, yes offline you can definitely uh, explore each one each and every control here on the left hand side and uh, explore them and some of the very interesting thing is a web browser right this is a control is really interesting using this control uh, I can actually uh, create a web browser of my own uh, just in a matter of uh, a couple of clicks away um, yeah I'm really tempted to demonstrate such things uh, so using the Windows application the ready-made controls you can actually do a ton of uh, interesting things uh, the container controls we did see a form itself is a container okay and other container uh, types are available on the left hand side you have a flow layout panel if you're a Java program then you know what is a flow layout panel uh, once you add this panel on the form uh, so in other words if you see the form itself is a parent control for everything and again this form whatever we're seeing on the right hand side can also go and sit onto another container and that container again is like a parent to parent again we'll see that container as well today and group box panel uh, split container uh, split container is again interesting if you see a split like this right uh, <clears throat> just like a windows uh, you see a split here so this is what a split means so left side there is another container and right side is another container so you can achieve that using this split container it's again interesting uh, Thing. and I get tab control a tab control will give you the behavior just like your internet internet explorer if we take a look at this and uh, these are the tabs right so you can actually have a tab control like this so that's the container control again and uh, table layout panel again uh, this is for database kind of applications you can make use of that and it's you know again I don't want to get into details of each one of them uh, because of our time constraints okay the menu uh, the menus toolbars and everything if you see the uh, this is a status strip we will see some of these today uh, tool uh, tool strip we have tool strip container everything uh, dot uh, a 
visually whatever applicable to any uh, program we will see anyway don't worry about that now we will see some of these definitely we will see a status strip menu strip and context strip again this is a context menu and this is a menu that comes below your this is a menu item right so you can create this menu it's a child's play in um, visual studio and data container we have a data set uh, and other things we are not there yet so it has a components printing for printing you can have a pre uh, print preview buttons everything so everything is ready made you can just have to drag and drop and just in uh, assign a couple of uh, um, properties to it and you are good to go and dialogues uh, this is very interesting you have a color dialog font dialog open file dialog save file dialog and all these are you know pretty much if you see uh, the, all the visual thing for example if I say open so this dialog you don't have to write any code for this this dialog is readily available so we will see some of those uh, as well we'll see uh, open file dialog uh, not font uh, font and other things will be we can add but uh, not now save file dialog if I show you one of the dialog how to make use of it you can actually explore the remaining that's as easy as that you won't write uh, more than uh, three four lines of code and yes, uh, WPF again is a different thing. A reporting you have, you can actually drag and drop a report viewer and associate the respective uh, database source or whichever source you like. And go on. <clears throat> and this is a power pack tool. So these are a couple of rectangle as well as shapes and other things you can add up. Um, and print form, you can actually directly add this control and uh, print the form as is uh, that appears on the form. So it's uh, pretty easy. You just add that control and just. Uh, initialize them with the required parameters it's done okay so it's very rich we'll see some of them and you will experience uh, the richness of the uh, Visual Studio IDE in building applications okay so now we are with the form okay to start with what we're going to do is uh, we will uh, take a look at the the first uh, five of them um, what I'm trying to do here is uh, to uh, walk through creating a application which uh, okay I'll take a default uh, some path from the file system to take a default path from the file system what I'm going to do is uh, to do that I'm going to take a text box and there's a rich text box if you want to make use of a rich editing that's available you can actually uh, make use of the rich text box as well. So now uh, this is the text box control. I just tried and drop. If you take a look at this small uh, tool tip again here available, it's ready made uh, readily uh, for fast access of the key properties. Okay, this is how you can access the properties. Otherwise, you can also right click and say properties. Okay, and other shortcut for that is F4. You hit F4, you'll see the properties pan on the right hand side. And uh, since I don't want to be, uh, I can simply drag and drop into the pan. So that it saves my editing place, right? And okay, so I have this and what are the other properties that I'm interested in? So what I'm interested in is the name of the control. Here, the name of the control, I want to change it to say, txt uh, directory t o r y directory mm, name okay so this is going to hold the directory name that I'm interested in so uh, probably it's going to be pretty long so I'm going to keep it pretty long here <coughs> okay and then what else what else I want to do um, I wanted to go for uh, again, if you're very interested, then you can actually go and check so many so many other options available here. And a key thing you, you might be interested to know is the the alphabetical sorting here, and also category categorically you can group based on uh, here. And uh, if you if you take a look at this icon, you should be familiar with this icon. This is a events window. Uh, in this events pan, you can see all the different events that are available on this text box control. And uh, uh, take a look at this one. So this is what indicates the what are the properties listed below are associated to the respective control. And it also gives you the uh, namespace under which this control is inherited to. 
this is actually it's, uh, this is a class text box is a parent class from where this txt director name is inheriting from and this text box is available in forms namespace system.windows.forms namespace so you will see the for the namespace concept everywhere okay you can never uh, ignore it um, okay so we added the uh, text box here and interestingly if you want to format this uh, to a very rich look you can actually do that you can you can actually change its style completely uh, if you take it to the properties pan and uh, so the appearance, you can actually change the uh, background color here and the style. Right now it is 3D. I'm going to make it single, so it's going to be a little flat. Cursor, I have font, four color. I can change all these uh, at design time. At the same time, all these properties are accessible even at the runtime. So you can actually change it, change them uh, at runtime. And most commonly used one is this. This is text, right? So when, if I say test okay so that's what the value means so text is a very fundamental uh, property this is available for almost all the controls all the all the input controls and uh, so whatever in dotnet take a multi line text box or take a uh, drop down items or any any other control they all have uh, the property called text so using which you can read including the form title if you want to change the form title you actually will access the uh, make use of the uh, text property for in this case now I shifted my uh, selection to the form one so I want to change the form properties in this case if you see the text form one form one is what the text assigned um, by default and that's what you see here and I, if I want to change this then what I need to do is I just have to go here. So in this case, what I'm going to say is uh, um, directory info. Okay, this is what my exercise title is. And of course, this is the appearance on the UI. So, but again, the form name itself is still not uh, changed. And that's again, uh, part of the name. So name is different from text. So the name of this control is going to be again form one what is this name represents this name represents the your source file and the class name and again since the form one is also again class right so this is also a class form one is a class which is partial if you remember we did talk about what is a partial class okay so partial class can be spanned across multiple source files or multiple code files so what this means is I can have another class CS file and I can say public partial class form one. What happens is whatever I add to that file uh, and whatever this file is having, both will be uh, treated as a single class at runtime. So we did see that uh, when we did talk about the partial classes. And to shift from source to designer, if you take a look at this uh, icons on the right hand side, so this will go to the design view and this one is a source view. Okay, so these are something which you need, you need want to familiarize yourself. That's how you can actually explore the properties of the respective control and then change it. I'm just making you familiar with the uh, Visual Studio ID because this is the first uh, time we are introducing to the uh, Windows-based programming. If you already have, make your hands wet um, by exploring all these uh, windows uh, so that this will be uh, useful for you to uh, build a rapid applications. And okay, now we'll move on. Okay, and uh, we change the form, and I also I don't want to have this uh, uh, default uh, value for text. Okay, done. Now I want to have some uh, uh, visual appearing some text so that people know what is this, right? So I want to say that uh, this is a directory. Let's see, it's root directory. Okay, so root directory is added up now. That's a simple label. It doesn't have uh, 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 anything more than that. You can have, of course, events on top of labels, but again, we are not interested in going that level now. Okay, so next immediate thing I want to add. Uh, what I'm trying to do here is I'm going to uh, use this part to, um, to locate a folder in my um, system. 
Okay, to do that, what happens is I'm going to actually, sorry, if I double click, it's always take you to the default event handler. In this case, I don't want to go there yet. Uh, so I want to change the name of this uh, button. Again, if you see the text is a property for that. And uh, what I want to do is, if you look at a normal scenario to browse, you can say uh, BROWSC, this, or another shortcut here is uh, three dots, three dots. This is a simple, uh, uh, three dots can always uh, simplify that okay, you want to hit that to browse to a folder. And the button, BTN, I just giving the, uh, the, uh, the, the naming conventions, uh, Hungarian notations, although this is not, uh, uh, it's pretty absolute in dot um, and programming to use the Hungarian notations, but I'm little used to that. I'm making uh, right like that, but don't worry, you can actually simply name it something else. Um, you may not use a three digit prefix uh, before the name. Okay, I'm just using BTN for button, say browse. Okay, so browse. I want to add some action to this, right? So what I want here is, I'm going to save this now. And upon clicking of this icon, what should happen is, it should open the dialog to locate a file in my file system, okay? And now how can I do that? I can do that by, by using the folder browser dialog, okay? folder browser dialog again as you know this is a class available and I need to create an instance of it what I need to do is create a variable for that folder browser dialog is equal to new folder browser dialog and this is how I create instance of it right and now f uh, bd dot I will set the root folder so that it uh, starts with my some system defined uh, folder if you t if you see the intelligence is smart enough you know it's really helping you uh, by picking the right one say if I say root folder is equal to and space it says it's taking a enum if you see uh, this property is actually taking a enum called environment special folders again so special folders I'm going to pick the special folders you don't have to break your head it's simply my documents, right? My documents is my, is a folder, it's a system folder, which you normally see as a my documents. My documents is my user specific my documents folder. So you don't have to <laughs> really worry about. If you take it, this is a special uh, uh, namespace in other words, right? This environment is a special namespace within which you will find all the uh, plat platform specific uh, settings, uh, even uh, specific to even Newland character, you, you can try to explore this environment uh, namespace. It has again, again one other thing is the special folder dot my documents, right? Again, this is again specific to the respective platform. Platform, when I said it means the respective operating system. Okay, so if you hard code this uh, in general, right? If you hard code this to saying, okay, C users. Uh, uh, my name, Shekhar Aripaka, documents, test files, then it might work in my mission, but once it goes to your mission in your local, you might not have a user called Shekhar Aripaka in your local machine, right? You should be in your respect to who are logged in, uh, my documents folder. So to make it very generic enough so that it, this my program works on any machine, including a Windows-based application, Windows-based machine or across uh, win various Windows operating system versions, like Vista or XP or uh, Windows 7, everything. So this environment will uh, ensure that you're looking at the my documents in the respect to operating system. And, uh, and also, you have the has flag. If you take a look at the, it has a has flag. If you're really writing this application to fit for a, a heterogeneous platforms like a Unix, or um, uh, what Linux and other things, right? So you want to d double check if they also have something called a word, uh, my documents, uh, the system folder, special folder, and use this flag and then go ahead with that. If this is th there, that's fine, otherwise no. So in my Windows, I don't have any problem, I have that available. Okay, what next important thing? FBT dot, what else I want to see? So you, at this point, I might want to have a uh, okay filter criteria. Uh, before we go to filter criteria, I can say show dialog. 
okay uh, as simple as that just a show dialog now let's run this and see to keep it very very simple and minimal okay if I hit it it straight away jump to my documents and in this case I am done I'm gonna pick my test files folder and say okay so nothing else happened right because the dialog operation is done it just opened I just said show dialog it just opened the dialog and closed now I want to pick the uh, pick the selected folder here right so how do I do that I want to select that and assign to my text box and already name my txt directory name dot and it, I'll access it property to all text is equal to sorry fbd dot there should be something called selected path yes there's a selected path okay that's all I need run this now and pick this anything material yes so it just got the path which I wanted to get it right school so now I got the directory path that I'm interested in but we haven't yet used any of the uh, stuff uh, related to system.io this is completely the control set from the forms namespace right so is this good enough yes it is pretty good enough I don't have to write any any other code here at this point I have the folder path now I'm going to do a, a little interesting thing what I want to do is I want to access the entire uh, directory uh, and read out the contents of the respective directory in this case for example if I am going to give the root folder as uh, this folder test files what I want to do is I want to list out all the files uh, uh, again iterate through the respective folders and uh, read out the folder and its files and it can map to the nth root you don't know what's the depth of the respective folder hope you understand what I mean to say so uh, so we're going to use a recursive algorithm uh, as a programming uh, language wise and also the directory info and file info uh, classes to help us okay how do we do that so first thing first so first thing I'm going to make use of the directory info first thing is okay I want to say a method private because I'm going to use it within this form so I want to make it private and say return right now I don't want to return anything but I just want to list out into the uh, some container okay so I need to have some container to list out things okay let's do finish that first which container is best fits to list out my folders here you can actually go for a list view again so list view is a good uh, container which will show you items uh, just like your uh, windows like this you can actually pick the type here I can say uh, yeah pick the icons here so it's the same view it's a list view will give you the same look and feel like this you can actually try this uh, at home to keep my session simple what I'm going to do is um, because for list view you can actually associate a image uh, uh, I, images uh, and link the respective icon to the it's a little bit of lengthy code so I don't want to go that lengthy route I want to make it a little simple uh, by adding so I have a list box here which I can drag and drop here so this list box is pretty much like our collection which can hold list of items within this <clears throat> okay and I'm going to name this list of uh, so if you see the items as a collection so it's a property called items or, uh, collection and you should be very very familiar with this items and collection right so which we have used in uh, uh, while uh, uh, walking through the system or collections namespace and in this case list uh, LST for just a naming image uh, naming convention is I'm following directory info right so I just say directory info and yes this is I'm just change the name nothing else okay so rest all remains same okay so to process um, this action I need some action item like action button uh, so I'm going to add another button which is saying okay so it is going to be tracked like this uh, let me give a little bit height and I'll say name I'll say what else say button okay get the direct directory in full 
Okay, so you might uh, uh, want to pay attention to the naming conventions uh, the respective project might adapt. Okay, so every project, in other words, every company will have their own naming conventions for everything. Uh, like for example, the button, how are you going to give a name to it? So you better uh, read the naming conventions document uh, if they have one. Usually most of the good companies or uh, well-established companies do have their own naming convention so that they want to maintain a consistency among uh, all the applications that they create, uh, including at the source code level and also visually also. So of course visually elements, whatever you see, uh, will be part of your uh, requirement specification. So people do normally specify how this layout should look like and what are the elements uh, will look like and what each and every action items will, should be doing and so on. So they will, you will get the specifications as part of the, your development. Uh, but the coding wise, the coding specifications will be completely different. You always want to uh, refer to that before you get into trouble. So you might write a code at the end of the coding phase. Someone, uh, one of your peer or lead will come and review your code and uh, list out the 200, 300 defects on your code. It's not a defect, it's actually a, a non-compliance uh, with respect to the coding standards, whatever they adopt. So if you are non-compliant to the coding standards, like the naming, how the oh, okay, you're supposed to put BTN in front of all the controls and you didn't put, so that's a NC. So you have to go and probably sit overnight or weekend and fix all your coding defects. So you don't want to get into the situation. So well ahead, be prepared, follow the naming conventions, what you're going to put, and then go ahead, okay? And in this case, uh, text button, I'll say get uh, director info. So those are the kind of tips uh, I can give you uh, while programming, so just make sure you follow. Another shortcut tip here, in this case, right, uh, when I say directory, so if I want to have add a hot key to this action item, so what? how can I do that? There's a simple way to do that is, uh, let me see, it's still supported here, ampersand symbol, and I say save. So. I, in this case, what I mean to say here is, if you see the, uh, while adding the ampersand to D, what happened here is it made D as my hotkey. Uh, so this can be uh, invoked by Alt plus the respective letter Alt T on this form. Okay? So that's what it means. So we'll see that. Okay? Since I already had a, a hotkey here. Uh, once I add the text, I don't have to go and click the button. I straight away, if I say Alt and D, uh, it should run. Okay. Okay. Now I have to get uh, directory info. What this means is, once I hit this button, after picking the uh, directory info, I should list out the contents of that folder here. Okay. So we'll do that code here. So before we do that, we will be writing a. So this is the event handler for that button kick, right? So we know what is the event handler, and if you take a code behind, you see delegates, right? If you recollect, we did have a delegates behind the events. Okay, now uh, we're going to say uh, private. I don't want to make this public at, at this point. Get directory. Get directory info, and what this is going to take? This is going to take a string of a directory, right? Uh, the root directory, in other words, uh, this should be string, string root directory, right? And this is going to be my code block. And of course, I forgot to give a void because this is not going to return anything, right? My compiler is not cribbing now. So now what I'm going to do? So what I, immediate step I should do is I need to transform this root directory into my system dot root right uh, system dot io dot do I have that namespace included here? No, using system dot io that's the namespace I'm interested in. Anyway, there are many other namespaces that you are not using at this point actually, so you can actually clean them up. By default, uh, since it's a Windows based application, it, the template itself is going to, is, comes with these default uh, namespaces which you can make use, otherwise uh, you are welcome to clean them up, okay, at the end of it. And that could be one of your code checkpoints people do normally recommend at the development stage. Here. Directory info is a class and di I'm going to say is equal to new 
directory info. If you see, directory info is an instance method, right? It's not a uh, static uh, class. Of course, it doesn't have any static numbers that I can make use of it. And if you take the, uh, it has only one constructor. If you see, it has only one constructor which takes string as path. So I have the string here, which is called root directory info. Okay, so that's uh, I created the instance of my direct info. What this will have is it will going to get all the information uh, necessary or the methods available uh, to, uh, to access this directory. So what all I'm interested in? I'm interested in getting the, uh, I'm first of all I'm interested in knowing if this has any uh, uh, files, right? So I need to get list all the files within it. How do I do that? I can use for each for each, open brackets and close brackets. Okay, hope you're able to see that. And I'll say file info. I'm gonna make use of file info. For each file info, if I um, in di dot get files. So get files will get you the uh, all the files within the file info. I don't know why this is scripting. Let's see. Yep, now it's good. So hope you know the shortcut to do that. Uh, whenever you're writing it, uh, it's a simple control uh, space bar. It will give you the list of things and uh, and uh, yeah, control space bar. If you do, in a, it's going to give you that uh, list. Okay. <clears throat> the intelligence uh, can fill the remaining. Uh, in case if they are, if it finds multiple other classes uh, for the given keyword, then it's going to list. Otherwise, it's going to fill the available one. Got it? That's a shortcut key uh, when you're coding. Control uh, space bar again. Okay. So now what I'm doing here is uh, get files is going is a file. If you take a look at this closely, so it's a file info array. Okay, so you know what is square brackets, right? In uh, C sharp. So what's it, what is doing? It's get info is actually going to return file info array, and that's when I'm actually doing a for each on that array. And uh, file info is the object or that I'm looking out inside the info uh, get info. And of course, it, uh, this type itself specify that is a type of array of file info. So I will able to see the file info information inside that. So fi at a given point will represent the one file, right? So all I need here is <coughs> uh, say a list of directory info dot items, right? Items, items, where is items? Items is a collection. If you see, <coughs> this is an object collection. And object collection has an add, remove, and other, other members which we have seen uh, in the system or collections. So these are the, some of the base uh, uh, classes that they are inheriting from. That's how you get this uh, add. So I'm going to add this uh, respective member. And add with some formatting because I just want to give along with the file name, I want to show something else. For that, I will just use the same old technique, string.format. And within this, I am going to put uh, the first placeholder for file name, separate by another one with something. Let's see what else I think I can put there. I'm just having a three placeholder, and the first one is file info dot name. Does it have a name? Yes. And uh, file info dot what else I can look up here. Uh, extension, I can, yes, extension is fine. File info dot, what else I have? Directory name, exist, full name. So if you see the FI has all these methods available which you can actually make use of it. Exist is again a simple method which you can actually pass a given file and check whether that file exists in that folder or not. So you can do all the file IO operations using these. Uh, yes, length is a good thing. It will give you the size of the file. Okay, okay. So that's that's all I'm interested in. I just need to add the semicolon, right? Okay. Now we need just need to call. So what this is doing is it taking some path here, and actually uh, reading all the files within this given directory, 
right? It's a simple one. What I need to do here is just call this passing the directory name that we have available, right? So this is what I need and compile the code. So you're clear what we are doing right now. So what this is doing is, okay, gets the list of files in the given file directory. So that's what this is doing for your information. And we are just calling that from the button click. Okay, so now we make use of this. I'm going to pick my uh, test files location to keep it simple and uh, so that we know what it's reading, what it is doing and hit the get browser. So what it did, uh, it did, it just got me some list of files, right? We'll just compare this with what we have in the real fold, folder. Okay, so to keep it simple, I want to have a details here. Okay, what it did, it, it just listed me these four files out, right? Test file one, um, and also some of the hidden files which I don't see here from the given uh, folder, which is this one. Okay, makes sense. Now what I want is uh, not this exactly. Uh, I want to even iterate through the sub folders and get me all. For this, I need to actually repeat the same operation recursively till the end of the folders, right? So that's how uh, I can achieve that it's going to list all the files within the given directory. Okay, so we'll do that. So if you are familiar with what the recursive algorithm means, you can actually take a look at this now. So what recursive algorithm means is uh, the recursive nature of a, uh, a method will be calling itself within the method itself. In this case, uh, we will call the same method from inside this uh, my method body recursively till the end uh, till we reach the end of the folders how do we do that okay in this case I need to check if this uh, di has any directories how do, do I do that it's a get, get directories right and in this case what I'm going to do is uh, if di get directories of course I need to open a bracket here for if dot length okay if it is if the given directory has any other directories dot length is greater than zero right that's the check then what I need to do I just call myself I just get directory info passing the respective directory name the I directory dot name okay so uh, Ideally, since this is a single line statement, I can put it like this and also I can actually make it a single line. So for better readability, calling get uh, directory recursively till the folder doesn't uh, have any directories. Okay, this is a simple recursive algorithm which is actually going to call it itself till it has no directories, right? This is the simplest one. So let's do what it's going to do. Let's see what it's going to do. In other words, okay. Part of my language. There you go, it broke in. What it's saying, could not find part of the path, notepad, uh, test files. Test files, part of, okay, so because I just uh, passed in di uh, dot name. So it, because the just passed the name of the directory. What is the best fit here? Let us see, what is the best fit to pass? Does it have anything called full name? Yep, there is a full name. So this will give you the full name of the path. So what I should be doing is pass the full name of the directory instead of passing just the name of the directory, right? This is what I need. Okay, so again, I'll pick my test finds and say get, okay. Let us make use of the hot 
key here. Let me press the Alt key. If you notice, the D got highlighted. Okay, uh, and I am pressing Alt D now without clicking. There you go. It did actually work, and again, uh, it error out. An unhandled exception stack overflow exception occurred in MS Core lib, and uh, why? Let's see the details. What it says cannot evaluate the expression because the current thread is stack overflow. So it looks like it is going uh, recursively till the end of. Uh, so to debug, this is where we need to start. Let us see where the things are going wrong. Okay. Now I said enter. So now where are we? We are in test files and I'm getting into the next level and it is calling itself. So it again came back. Okay, so what I'm doing is actually I'm passing the wrong thing, right? See, I'm actually passing the DI directly to itself, right? So what it's doing is the directory path is actually referring to itself every time. What I need to do is if it is having a subdirectory, then I need to actually iterate through those directories and pass it. That's what my problem is. That's why the stack got overflowed because I'm actually passing infinitely. It's never going to end. So see, we are discovering errors and we're going to fix them. And we need to actually do again for each. Now I'll say directory info di. Uh, see now, since I already have a di info in di dot get directories. So this is what I will be doing now too so that I, I trade. So and this should be of course if this satisfies. Right. And where is my for each? Yep, for each is here and I will I should be calling uh, this from within my for each where in this case I'll pass the D info. Okay. So does it make sense now? Uh, so we get the primary directory, the root directory into this, we take its DI from it and from the DI we see if the subdirectories has uh, more than uh, zero, then we get into an iterate through each of its directories and call the respective uh, get directory info from the respective instance. So this will iterate through the all the respect to the but we actually need to move this files logic inside this. So before we do that, we will read all the files and then call this sub directory of the respective folder. So to know that which sub directory we are iterating through, we're going to say items dot add and I'm what I'm will be interested in getting is a full, just folder name string dot format and I'll say brackets uh, placeholder zero and what I'll be filling with uh, d info dot name right I just wanted inter interested in the directory name nothing else so at this point for the first directory info name I will be getting the directory name as the first item and the files underneath that file. Okay, so this should be good to go. There you go. So we have this folder 1 and it has some of the files and also folder 11 and folder 2 and the respective files within that and I um, and okay so we just want to differentiate between these folders so we will do some little formatting like uh, adding a tab you know adding a tab is uh, just uh, backslash uh, T. This is the, this will add the tab, right? We did, uh, and get info. There you go. So this is my root folder and uh, all other things, all the files are in the uh, one step down. You can do a vice versa also. Yeah, that will be ideally a good fit. Okay, this is the last thing I'm changing here. So for folders, I'm going to remove the tab and instead of that, I'm going to add to my 
file content which is going to be more reasonable right okay so this is the last uh, uh, modification that I want to do to this program uh, we will move on to the next one so this is much better right so this is more visually appealing we have the folders on the left hand side and the files on the right hand side cool so we have successfully made use of the uh, recursive algorithm and also the directory info file info classes to achieve that information now we'll move on to the next item okay so we did not name this a very useful name here so I want to give uh, this class a very good name I'm going to say frm directory info info demo say demo okay good so this is what I'm naming so uh, ID is not enough it's asking to uh, replace that given name to everywhere yes do it so that I don't have to go manually and do the renaming and another important aspect I wanted to highlight here okay so we know that all these each and every element in the form uh, controls are classes by itself right we know that they are classes by itself and where are they actually so if I see my code file I don't see them right where are where, where did these uh, class files got, got in, initialized and where they got uh, uh, added so all that information is is part of the the first uh, if you take a look at the close look at this method this is nothing but the constructor right okay so take a look at the language features now this is the constructor because this is a mapping to the same class name and also it doesn't have written anything so th that means this is a constructor and what constructor of this frm directory info it's the default constructor again doesn't take any parameters what that means is when this is called with the default parameters this constructor is going to be invoked okay so this is where it's coming and it has only one method called a initialize component and what does this do and where did this go this is actually gone into the code file called designer.cs so this is the designer information is completely in a separate file whereas the code that you're writing to handle the events of that respective uh, code is a separate file both are separated from each other right and uh, the designer what is this class this is again a partial class if you see this is a partial class pay okay, close attention here so this is a separate file designer.cs and the class file name is same if you see uh, frm uh, directory info underscore demo and this is importantly to note this is a partial class okay now come back to the source file and my source file I can view from here and my source file is again same class name okay so same class name only thing it is inheriting from a form in this case in the other file it isn't and again interestingly this is a partial and that's the advantage of a partial class and as I said it's been widely used uh, in the Windows based applications and also web based applications and the reason why the designer file is separated from the code file is to if you take a look at the designer file it has ton of things it's actually doing everything that you're doing uh, from the IDE it's actually uh, creating instance of the respective classes and if you see it is actually creating instances at this point when it's initialized component it is this means this forms instance it's referring to the current instance of the form and um, initializing the respective controls with the respect to classes right it's all initialization happened here and also all the once it is created the instances of that respective class members uh, it's also initializing with the properties that you are setting in this case if I see my name I just set from the ID saying txt, uh, TXT directory name and it, it's actually all that information is going into the designer information designer file so my, my code file everything so in this case for label right if I do change this label what I'm going to do is uh, okay take a look at the find and replace control H find and then replace this with this what will happen now is replace 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 find that and replace me everywhere where it is doing so now 
now we'll compile this now we go to the designer and see it its name it's got changed right so that's what it means so it's vice versa so whatever you're doing from the ID uh, can get replaced uh, in the reflected ID and whatever your values are setting they all are actually writing to the designer file itself and uh, at runtime it's actually building the script uh, building your uh, visually appealing UI using by creating the respective instances and doing all that action items without your notice uh, otherwise if you're very well familiar because you are already familiar if you take a look at this uh, plus is equal to what it is it is a delegation right uh, load is an event and you're actually delegating the event handler and associating the this is a delegate right and we are actually associating this method form load and this is the event handler right we did walk through so much so much detail of that and we know what it is and in this case you can actually write another method and delegate that uh, to your form load event right so that's uh, okay so we're good uh, now what next we want to do right okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to add uh, another form right another form so this is good this is getting me the directory info so another form should do what uh, okay let me add another form I'm going to uh, yeah cover this topic for today and uh, close it I don't want to continue tomorrow okay uh, uh, I'm going to show you the two other things uh, uh, one for creating a file um, and of course open a file okay and this I will want to name as uh, okay frm uh, stream stream uh, reader writer okay this is oops sorry I think I named it wrong oh yeah cool uh, I thought I'm mistaken <clears throat> okay this is a, some, another form which is going to be doing uh, read and write operations and uh, to read a file what I'm going to do here is okay I'm going to pretty much do the same copy based of this content in this case it's going to be okay I, I can actually in this case uh, we can actually go and create a control but we're not covering that uh, anyway you can actually uh, re, if you want to reuse some some blocks like this from a different uh, screen and share across multiple screens then you can actually make that as a uh, user control and make use of that user control so that you can you don't have to you know copy paste and uh, change things like this okay so we are not doing user controls anyway uh, and here the okay file path so in this case what I'm trying to do is open a flat file uh, and view it and in this case I will be uh, I will need the same code behind although I copied the controls it doesn't uh, guarantee that it's going to copy my code also so I need the same code here but of course it's not exactly the same code and again I'm little lazy to type in the whole thing so I'm uh, picking it from there and adding it to my browser control in this case I am I don't need a folder browser I actually need a file opener right file dialog yep. now it's an open file dialog you know this is how one way is this if you know the class names you can actually create instance of this and uh, take care of them this is one way another way is to drag and drop these controls if I say uh, this control if I drag and drop they're going to sit in this tray here they, they are not visually visual tools that can appear on the form but the instance of that is directly created for you from the ID so when I drag and drop and I can make use of them in the code like this in this case it's the name is file open dialog one right and I can actually say file open where is it is it file open dialog I can say this dot uh, yes open file dialog open file dialog uh, because the instance is already created you don't have to create instance of it so you can straight away say access its members directly so this is another way to do it okay so we are going uh, completely a code route not the ID route so I'm getting the this out 
because I always uh, like doing from the code so that uh, your designer is going to be pretty much cleaner and also you, you have more control on what you're doing okay and uh, yes file open FOD file open dialog I'll say uh, FOD and does the F file or initial directory so it's an equivalent to root directory that's what I believe so okay so this is going to take a string okay so I'm going to to specify this right there is a special operator called at the rate symbol to make your uh, uh, escape sequence nullify the escape sequences uh, in the if you remember what is an escape sequence um, .NET uh, in the language we have used the uh, special key, uh, tags like this backslash T so that represents something um, some meaningful name so those are called escape sequences and if I have a, a string with those escape sequences uh, then it's going to creep you cannot have those uh, here so to nullify that so this is going to take care of this and now fod dot show dialog <clears throat> okay and uh, once it is shown then fod dot uh, file name this only again you have a file names this is going to give the array of strings that means this dialog will let you select multiple files in that case you need to use the file names otherwise file name in this case, I'm going to make sure that I pick only the one file at a time. So this is the file name that I'm going to. Oh, okay. So this is again a wrong uh, name we have since we copied from the other one. So I can actually name it as uh, appropriate name. I'll save txt file. Okay. If you take a look at this, IntelliSense is uh, ID is smart enough. It even replaced wherever it applied okay so it increases your coding okay now so let's uh, go and run this code okay so where is this form this is still showing me the directory info form right so why is it not showing the stream reader form you already know why because your program.cs is actually passing something else so what I'm going to do is uh, do this I can do this right but is it the right way to do it no right definitely not so it's a windows based application you want some menus on top of it and the menus through using menus you will normally access the form right so to make it a, a full-fledged application so what we need is a parent uh, form that can host all these children right so that it looks like a parent if you see Visual Studio IDE uh, the ID is actually hosting so many other forms like these, right? These are independent small forms which are actually docked in so easy way so that the main application is this. So there's a parent form which is actually hosting all the other forms and it has a menu st uh, strap and also you have a, another menu strap, a bar like this where you can have icons and everything else. So we want something like this. To do that, what we need to do is we're going to add an MDI form a new item and if you go take a look at the type of items we have there should be one called uh, multiple document interface MDI so there's a multiple document interface MDI parent form you need this and look at the magic the template itself added so many other things like menu is available directly and the even the tool tab is available and you have the strap bar and also tool tape menu strip uh, uh, again tool strip there are so many other controls which are added by itself if you see the uh, menu strip it's highlighting the menu strip so that's a, another control that you want to add right and the tool tips tool tips you can add a collection of tool tips and associate the each of the control to the given tool tip so that whenever you want you put your mouse cursor there you have a tool tip popped up on the right hand side so that's the tool uh, tool tip and the status bar the sta status strip is at the bottom so if you, if you want to see what status happening the same way if you open the notepad you might see the file that is opened and also if it is saved successfully some messages you can show it at this point so this is my full-fledged application window right and for this I want to name a uh, give a proper name of course I'll say uh, system dot demo right 
uh, from some good names. So I can you in the real time you can also change the icons um, using the same property set and icons. Uh, where is that icon? Appearance wise, you can actually pick the icons. An icon is available at the project level as well as at the form level. You can actually pick any icon file here and associate to it, and it should be good. And of course, you can actually pick an icon from anywhere in your <coughs> file system. Uh, once you add it as a link, it's going to uh, take a copy of that file and put it as part of the project. So you don't have to really worry about the path where it's going to be. Ideally, such situations you can handle by using the resource files. Did I talk about the resource files anytime? Probably this is the right time. <clears throat> if you go to the project properties, uh, there is something called resources, which we haven't actually taken a look at it closely, right? So this resource is actually a, a resources. It's not only just a name and value. In this case, I can say icon. I say open icon. Open icon and values. This value is actually uh, not only string, it can take anything. In this case, if you uh, strings, you can actually pick anything icon like this and uh, you can add anything uh, that you wanted to. <coughs> and in this case, I want strings, right? And add resource. Uh, add resource you can actually pick from, add a new icon or image and so on. You can actually pick from your repository and add it to this. What you can do is once you add it, you can add actually add a comment for your readability purpose where you are using it. This is only to manage your resource file. Uh, once you do that, in this case, I'll say some error code. Say error code 100 and I'll say uh, nothing can be. This is some resource text, right? I wanted to keep this so that I don't want to hard code into my uh, system. So I want to keep this separate from my source code. Uh, so this I can do. Uh, since this is empty, I'm going to delete this off. So I'm just giving an example. So once I do this, uh, what happens is this is going to be added to the uh, resource files. And uh, since this uh, resource uh, uh, is embedded in, as part of the code itself. So what you can do is you can actually directly make use of it directly. Again, now we are going, we are actually going out of our uh, area of uh, interest today. So you can actually explore on this resource files. It's going to be very useful in the real time. People might add uh, resources like this. Uh, like dynamically, if you want to change the icons here, you can actually add to your resource file and uh, load it from your resource file directly. So that you can do. Um, Okay, so where are we? So we have this menu strip and we want to add action items to it. So uh, since it is very properly aligned, you have a new open, save as, save, print and all this. This is ideally good fit, uh, best fit for me to extend uh, uh, the template to fit my notepad implementation, right? Which is pretty much uh, what I want. But I don't want to write a full-fledged code here. So uh, all these are just some menu items and of course not just a uh, template. It also comes with some uh, um, good uh, code behind also. If you take a look at the code, it brings in it brings in a lot of code for you, uh, readily available, uh, which you can actually make use of it directly. It has some of the events like the open file dialog implemented for you for opening a file and saving a file. So I can actually make use of that. So instead of these children, I want to make this as a parent, right? MDI parent. Okay, let me keep that name as is MDI parent one. In this case, what I'm going to do is MDI parent one. That's what I need to replace it. Now I'll see what. So I have my parent form open. Now what is going to happen? It has a pre. It came with the code that's what I have written right now. File open, and what happens if I open a file, for example? Nothing happens, right? So it just came with the predefined set of uh, things, but nothing else is going to happen. What you need to do is you need to actually write an implementation for each of these action elements, right? You just have some piece of code available. That's it. So we will make use of that uh, strongly now. Go back to this menu. I want to add a menu item so that I can actually uh, make use of this, like a directory info. Okay, so I since disturb, uh, instead of disturbing the existing ones, actually I can add uh, another item, right? So for that, you just have to click on the menu strip. Again, if you don't want to use uh, the predefined template, you can always uh, drag and drop the menu strip 
from your left hand side components um, and menu strip should be somewhere uh, uh, menus yeah menus in here so here menus and toolbars all these controls are available here you can either drag and drop here and play around in the design time and also at the same time you can actually make use of the um, language wise you can create instance of them and add to the form and so on at runtime also you can do that as well it's completely open to you how you want to do it okay in this case I don't want to do that I'm going to leverage what we have um, okay so now what I want to do is uh, uh, okay first we link our uh, director info how to call the child forms from the parent form so that's a good question now now I want to say uh, say demo as a root uh, if you see this is the right hand and, and bottom most items are available so that, that means you can either expand this menu item from the right hand side or vertically down and now demo I'll say direct info T O R Y info okay so under demo I have one item called direct info another item called uh, stream reader right stream uh, reader demo and on, uh, another one is uh, stream writer So so on. So I can actually expand it uh, either, either way. In this case, in the, at the root level or uh, as a context menu to item to this, and so on. It's uh, intuitive. You don't have to write any code for that. You just have to add items to the menu strip. Once it is done, you need to, of course, invoke the respective form. How you're going to do is select this item and say double click, and you'll have the event handler click for that item and in this case what we're going to do is we, have, we want to show this form right we just need to create an instance of that form and pass it on the same way we did here we actually create an instance of this right so in this case what I'm going to do is uh, parent source code I want to create instance of frm directory info let's say some name f1 is equal to frm directory info and uh, f1 dot uh, show yep, show oh before showing again let's see what will happen if it if I really okay so there's a new keyword missing here okay let's do this and see what happens and then we'll uh, come back okay so what happened here is this form I actually created in this, uh, this form but this is outside the parent right it's actually came outside the parent so if you don't assign uh, that tell uh, that this form need to be a child of this it doesn't sit inside that that means dockability of that form is not going to be uh, available so what we need to do is uh, yep yeah, now it's good so if I expand and expand this, so this is part of the main MDI form. Okay, so and once I can run this, I can run this as good as the uh, same normal way and get info. It looks like this doesn't have any files within it. Okay, so test files and then say get directory info. Yes, it's good. So it's working as good as and I can simply uh, close this and again I can open this that's fine so if you remember everything behaves just like a normal thing see if I expand it my uh, child forms uh, title bar is uh, gone up as a sub item here and also the menu items if my child also have some menu items you can actually merge them to the parent form uh, so if it has a menu items here that can that be merged along with the parent form also so it's completely available uh, you don't have to uh, write any code for that now in this case uh, we will move on with the next form right <clears throat> okay stream uh, reader writer so I'm in this case I'm going to do the same piece of code and uh, paste it here uh, F1 doesn't matter, so I'm going to say FRM. Okay, FRM stream re reader and writer. Okay, so that's all I need, and of course, this is the same thing. So if I run that piece of code, stream reader, yes, I it works, and 
does this work? This is an open file dialog and I'm opening test file 1 and yes I got it. So next step I want to do is I want to open this file content and display, right? We'll do that. It doesn't take more than two lines of code. Stream reader form. Okay, so we did till that part. What I'm going to do is add uh, another text box. Of course, I can even copy paste from the first one, but okay, this is a very lengthy list. I don't want that. I want the common controls. Go to the text box control. And of course, I want to make this multi-line. Yes. And give a name. When it says multi-line, it be turned into string array. If you see the lines, it's a string array. Okay, so da, 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 no grouping, give me an alphabetical order so that I can track your name easily. TXT file content. And yes, when this file content, yes, so this is what I have and I just have to read, uh, okay, so this file path, I will say read file. content right so this is a read file content of course the name I need to replace again this is uh, it always makes sense to keep your names readable so that when you write a code uh, it's going to be readable for you so that you always make sure that you're implementing the right code for the right um, property or right uh, item okay so read file content so what this should be doing. So in this case what I have is the file name, right? Uh, I need this file name. So using that file name how do I read the content of the file using stream reader, right? I'm going to make use of the stream reader sr is equal to new stream reader and this is going to take a, one of the argument calls path and the path I have txt file name dot txt okay this is the uh, input from the string and sr dot read to end will read the entire content of the file and I, once I'm reading what I need to do is I just have to assign it to txt file this is going to be the txt file content, right? File content dot txt is equal to, that's it, that's all I need. Okay, is there anything I'm missing? Definitely a major thing, but it will work. Stream reader. So I'm going to open a file like this and open and say read. So it says hello test. So that's what the content of that file is, I believe. And to double check, if I open this, yes, that's what it has. And I'll do something like uh, do, 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 do something, okay? Some text changes and I'm going to save it. And there you go. So that's the problem. So what it says, the process cannot access the file because it is being used by another process. So what mistake I did here? I just opened it, but I did not close it. So that's why this file is open for edit mode and uh, it's not available for other programs to access it. So whenever you're handling with the files, uh, it's all you have to choose whether really you're opening it for read-only mode or for write-only mode, you need to choose. Uh, in this case, my intentions are not to edit it. My intentions are only to read the content. So I need to make sure that I close it. Then I have to make a call called isr.dispose. In other words, you can have, uh, you can call the SR close also. So this was the right thing to do. Okay, so if I do this, and now I open this files reader, and open this and read the content. Hello test, good. Will I be able to edit it? Save. Yes, now there is no handle that is locking that file by this program. So now if I do the same read, then I'll see the 
latest update of that file. So it's pretty good and uh, the next thing it would be to edit this file and save it, right? That's again an easy one. What we're going to do is we're going to wind up with that. Okay, we're writing the file and we should be done with the file IO operations completely. And we will not come back and so rest is again up to you uh, to explore the remaining uh, aspects of the file handling. It's pretty easy. You don't really have to, as you see how, how many lines, lines of code I'm writing. Again, yes, another important thing I wanted to cover this area. Okay. When you're doing dispose, right, <clears throat> this is good. So, um, to close. So, what guarantees that this is called? What happens if there is an error at this stage? That handle is going to be there uh, forever. So, that the file get locked by this program. If you, if you notice in Windows uh, application, if you try to delete some file and it never gets deleted, because it says always says that some other process is using this this file, and you you will see that none of the other applications are running. Right, the handle is actually locked to that file, and that error will go off only when you uh, turn off all the applications, which we don't know which application is actually making use of that file. Although you can uh, technically, uh, but at the time you don't actually know. And ideally, you, you you there are other ways to find which process is running, but uh, ideally user cannot see. Which one? Ideally, you have to what to do is you have to shut down the pro your computer and restart the computer, and then you will be able to uh, delete that file. So that's what you usually you see, right? So you don't want to get into such situation. If any exception happens, then any time it needs to close it. So to ensure that, so this uh, the way is a using statement, using directive. Um, Using, if you know, we use it for importing the external namespaces. In other words, we also use the using uh, directive, U-E-S-I-N-G, okay? Uh, this is the U using directory, uh, directive, which you can use to ensure that the instance of the members are disposed irrespective of what. So what I do here is I do this and I don't call the dispose. What this directive ensures me that you can create instance of this, uh, you can create instance of any class that implements disposable interface. Again, that's again important. Does stream reader implements disposable interface? Let us see. Stream reader. This does. You have a dispose method. It's override dispose. Uh, it has a dispose method which is uh, coming actually from uh, uh, the i disposable interface. So it uh, any class that has a dispose pattern implemented. In this case, this is a dispose pattern. When you say uh, you implement that to provide the cleaning algorithm. If you remember the uh, garbage collection uh, we discussed in detail at that time, we did. Uh, also cover instead of finalizer, dispose pattern is the best way to apply a custom cleaning algorithm. And uh, yes, in this case, using stay, using directive, you can actually ensure that the the respective class dispose call is made if or in case of a successful execution or in case of a failure. Uh, this will ensure. And, and uh, also another way is by using the try finally. Try finally block also you can actually make use of it which in case so you will create instance of uh, the uh, SR outside the try and do the operation here and finally you will say close it. So in this case also you can uh, in this case you will say uh, SR dot dispose. So there is more lengthy coding right and uh, we don't want we always want to write a small code and in that case using is the best way to do it. And in this case you don't have to call the dispose that explicitly it is going to call uh, soon after the scope is ended. So we'll test that again. Let's see whether that really works or not. Okay, in this case I open the same file for edit and I go back and do some coding, changes to the file, save it. Yes, it allowed to saving. And now I do the get again, I see the change here. Cool. So it works. It's the same way as explicitly calling the dispose versus writing the using directive. This is again an important step. You know, you can apply this to any classes that implements i disposable interface or have the dispose pattern implemented. Okay. That's being said. We want to again go with the 
um, creating a new file, right? So we want to create a new file and for that uh, what I want to do here is Okay, we could do much better way, but uh, again, to because our idea is uh, to create a new file. So I'm going to make use of the same code. Uh, otherwise, what should ideally should be doing is probably you can try at home. Uh, I ideally should be actually uh, touching up with these right open. Uh, new uh, and save so I should be able to make use of these controls so in this case I'm not actually doing that so for the lack of time probably if I have this code uploaded then I, you will see that version as well um, but you can actually give it a try you can uh, it's the same thing right if, if you hit this it's actually creating it. all we, we need to do is we need to call the respective form passing this uh, whatever selected value to it and how do you do that we can do that by by, uh, by overloading the constructor. Uh, once you create the respective uh, form instance, uh, in this case uh, we are actually passing nothing. We can actually pass the values from uh, this uh, page, uh, this screen to the other, other screen by passing the uh, overloading the constructor. Right? In this case, if I want a file name to be passed as a because file name is picked from this uh, screen and pass to the next screen right so the next screen can do the rest of the operations that, that way you can pass it on okay to keep my example simple for the demo I am actually doing here uh, what I'm going to do is uh, text is uh, create new file create new file right using the same thing okay so creating new file what it should be doing Okay, what I should do again? I'm lazy, but okay. This time I will spare. I'll use a stream writer. Stream stream writer is W is equal to new stream writer, and it's going to take the path as a txt file name dot t ext text right it's doing the same code same piece of code only difference will be it's other way around sw dot write it's going to say write and what is the content I'm going to write I'll say txt file content dot txt that's, that's all it is it needs and the rest all is taken care of. In this case, I use the st stream reader to read and I call the read to end and in, in, the, in the other case, oops, sorry, this is an error. And the other case, I just use the stream writer, stream writer and I use this sw.write to output the file content, whatever I have in my text box. That's the only code. That's how many lines it took. It only took actually two lines of code because of the brackets. Uh, it's four lines. That's all I need. And in this case, what I'm going to do is uh, instead of open file dialog, I actually want to have a save file dialog. So that, um, okay. So I, what I'll do is I'll make it again simple. Okay, I'm. I know I'm doing a little crooked way uh, because I'm trying to fit everything into one of this. Uh, but okay, you can write a better one. Okay. If you, as long as you get the idea what I'm trying to do, uh, btn uh, save file dlg. Okay, so we're going to make use of the same code here. Only thing is, we'll be changing here is the. Okay, uh, only thing we'll be changing here is the dialog. Instead of open file, it's going to be save file and uh, save file dialog sft is what I would say and uh, sft sft so on and sft okay I, okay I should have used uh, shortcuts for that okay so does it uh, bother no no compilation errors and let me see. So in, in this time, what I'm oh, okay. I should have uh, linked uh, the separate form and uh, stream writer, but again, okay, don't worry. So you can do a better job. I know. 
and in this case, uh, okay, so I'm not opening. I want to actually create new, right? Okay, so this is a save as. If you just take a look at this, this is a save file dialog. It is save as, which is different from read. In this case, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to name a separate thing to keep what I have. Uh, text file 11 and uh, type, if you see, you can actually add a filter to it to have a type associated, but uh, right now we're not doing that. If we, you can actually f have a filter to filter only the respective files, in this case uh, star.txt, that you can add. Uh, right now, uh, for the time's sake, new file created, uh, whatever it is, and now says uh, create new file. Okay, so I don't see any status because I did not code to show status, and but the file is created, right? So the file is created successfully. So that's all it is. F uh, file IO is very interesting and very very useful, and there are a ton of other things. Uh, I think and I think I can make a quick quick very very quick demo for the last one. So that because I don't want to continue with this tomorrow again, uh, with the file system watcher, right? The file system watcher is again a very interesting one, and it's going to be very very quick. Uh, what I'll do is I'll make use of this here. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to write here is uh, say. Okay, I'll, I'll just uh, write a code to watch, and this will say just say watch, watch directory. What I'm going to do is add a listener to the directory that I'm going to pick and uh, notify me if there is any change happening on that directory, right? That's very interesting. And for that, what I need to do is uh, either I can do from the code. In this case, I'm again a little lazy. So I'm going to, what I do is I'm going to uh, bring in a control that I can do it for me. Directory searcher file system watch. Yeah, there you go. So there's a file system watch here, okay, drop it, and what I'm going to do here is uh, going to make use of it, I'll say, this dot, file system watch dot, what is that, I think this is the correct one, txt directory name, right, dot txt, all I need is just this, I believe, Let's take a look, and uh, then what else? Hmm, that's all. I can s say notify something, saying that yes, I'm being watched, <clears throat> and uh, I will do that by just adding it to this. Okay, directory info dot uh, items dot add say string dot format. It's the same usual statement to pass in the path that is txt directory name dot txt okay watching this c h i n g good <coughs> and semicolon at the end good and now what what will uh, how will i know get notified so for that notification if you know the, if you remember the event handling, right? Uh, we need to actually get into the event handlings for this control. So there's a changed event. Said right? whenever there is a change happens, this event will be fired and will get the information as part of the arguments e. So we need to trap that arguments into our directory. All that we need is that. Okay. And what I need to do is uh, add uh, whatever I'm getting values here e dot, if you see, so e is a spe special type of uh, argument, which is file system events org. It has a change type, uh, change type, sorry, my language is going and probably need to clean up uh, with some energy. Okay, and name, so I have, I'm just picking three values here. And uh, I'm going to show that out in this format here. And uh, one, and too. So that's a lot. That's all I need here. Nothing much. So I'm just making use of it, attaching the respective director to watch and notifying uh, us that uh, I'm watching, started watching the directory. And whenever some even ha anything happens in that directory, like adding a file, something like that, it should be notifying me. So in this case, I'm going to directory info and uh, 
pick a path my personal test files folder and I'll say watch. Now it's watching this folder. Now we'll go and do something on that folder. Will I add? Yes. When I add a file it did uh, track that event. So that means when I add a file it did and also when I, where does it happen? When if I modify the file? Yes. So if I modify the file then also the events got fired. It actually it's firing four different times. Only thing I probably need to filter out for a specific event and, and track it on, track it down. So, so what this uh, watcher is doing is actually watching for addition of new files and also modifying the existing files. Uh, and of course, it has multiple other filters that you want to pay attention, um, like including some other properties. If you take a look, like notify filter, uh, it has some notify filters. Based on that, it also behaves uh, behavior will change. And you can also filter for specific files, star.txt like that, or config so on and also look for uh, include subdirectories. Now it is false. If you turn it, turn it on then uh, whatever happens it, inside the entire root it's going to watch. Okay, so that's all I uh, would like to cover from system.io and uh, binary reader, binary writer again they are similarly just like a stream reader, stream writer except that they uh, read in terms of the byte array. Uh, uh, otherwise, uh, it's the same routine. You just have to read through as a byte array. You can actually uh, take a look at that examples uh, uh, from MSDN, and also you can play around with those. Um, and with this, I will conclude. I covered you some overview about the um, the MDI applications, uh, Windows applications, some overview of the tools and uh, other things, Visual Source Safe overview and many other things uh, that we have discussed today and hope you're comfortable in creating a Windows based applications. It's uh, pretty fast to create. Everything is available. Um, again, if at all uh, some task is taking long time for you uh, to write lengthy codes, then again think about it because a lot of things are readily available in Visual Studio. You cannot even imagine that something is available like this. Uh, you will be surprised to know. So explore in each and every control available in the control uh, in the toolbox on the left hand side and be aware, make yourself aware that so and so controls are available to make use of it. And uh, yes, I think uh, we did, uh, actually in other words, uh, this uh, um, we did not make use of uh, extensively of these controls. You can actually extend adding in new items and other things, separator and everything. Yeah, you can just play around. It's a child's play, in fact. So if you just walk through, you will understand how to do it. It's pretty much user friendly. And of course, from coding also, you can do it. And uh, of course, the progress bar, if you take a look at the uh, status bar here, it has a lot of other features like you can actually add a progress bar here and track if it is doing a lengthy process, then you can actually track it. Uh, and also split button, uh, we can have a ton of other things, a drop down control, uh, uh, it, it has a drop down control and so on. You can actually ex expand this uh, status bar also. On. I have a status and in this I have a name. Each item that you added up to it will have a name. All you need to do is uh, actually access that here. What I'm going to do here is as simple as uh, going to code behind or not code behind exactly to the respective, uh, for example in this case I'm going to open a file dialog at this file name. I'm going to just show that here. Text is equal to file, oops, uh, because file name is actually uh, declared inside, that's why I'm not able to access it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to declare it outside and then assign this here so that I can able to access that value, whatever I read. Okay, so compile this and uh, there is an error. Okay, so this is what the error, semicolon missing and there is another error which says uh, use of unassigned local variable. So when I have this I have to always and initialize with empty. Again remember when you are initializing with uh, strings there are two ways you can do. You can actually either do this way okay, 
or using the string dot empty. There are two different things, and the best thing is to do string dot empty because even though it, there is nothing here, it's actually treated as a string, and that will actually allocate a memory for that. Uh, since strings are immutable, so they're going to allocate a memory for that empty string. In this case, it's not. It's going to be empty, uh, and it's not going to allocate any memory for that. Okay, so just to demonstrate this, uh, I'm going to pick some file and I want to see this path in my status bar. So if you see, the status bar shows me that path. So that's how we can actually access the status bar and also, you know, we can actually explore up to your interest. It's going to be a pretty cool, interesting thing. So in this session, we did start uh, getting into the Windows uh, Forms-based applications uh, to start the introduction with the system dot io namespace in which we did some very good code examples uh, uh, covering uh, the file file info directory directory info file stream 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 reader stream writer and uh, we did not actually see an examples of a binary reader and binary writer but of course uh, i did give an overview of what it is and uh, yeah, you can explore more on that area. It's pretty much same as the uh, the consumption point of view. We can uh, use them to read any type of files, uh, or uh, other than any uh, text-based files, okay, including uh, images or video files and anything. So binary is uh, reader and binary writer. You can use it for all uh, types. And we did see a very good example or a demonstration with the file system watcher, and we will be seeing more about the uh, more with the file system watcher in the subsequent sessions.